Guys, catch me on the road right after you go to patreon.com slash Giannis Pappas Hour for our weekly bonus episodes. You can catch me in Dania Beach, Florida, September 13th through the 15th, Tacoma, Washington, September 19th through the 21st, uh, Vegas, September 27th through the 29th at Skank Fest, October 11th and 13th at West Nyack, New York at Levity Live, October 25th through the 27th in Brea, California at the Brea Improv, Milwaukee Improv, December 6th and 7th, Austin, December 20th through the 22nd, and Rochester, January 16th through the 18th, a lot of those tickets will be posted soon for Rochester and Austin. All the rest of the tickets are available at GiannisPappasComedy.com. Go get them now. Now enjoy the app. Hi, everybody. My name is Giannis Pappas. Welcome to the Giannis Pappas Hour, where we discuss things that are way above my intellectual level to understand, but we have a good time. We go on instincts here. My dad always told me I had a good instinct. He's like, son, you got good instincts. You're full of shit, but you got good instincts. So today, we're going to dedicate a full hour to uh, the mind virus that's currently going around on X called Jew Derangement Syndrome. There's no vaccine for it. They're trying to make a vaccine for it, but they don't want you to take it because Big Pharma is going to make it, and we don't trust Big Pharma. And listen... I am two seconds away from believing the whole thing. So I I don't know. I got a I got an itchy butt right now and I just I was looking for a Jew in my toilet. Yeah, I was looking for a Jew in my toilet. It's a very simple thing. You want to solve the problems of the world, you gotta go back into history and figure out things from Hitler's perspective. Okay? We've been a little hard on the guy. We've been a little hard on the guy. Has anyone ever put themselves in his, I can only imagine, seven woman's shoes? Has anyone ever put themselves in his shoes? It's not an easy task. Okay, you got all these POWs. Where do you put them? What do you do with them? You got to understand that this guy had a lot of logistical problems. It's not his fault. Okay, he wasn't prepared. He was not prepared. He did not have a plan. Can you imagine that? A German without a plan? That sounds a little fishy. This is the Yannis Pappas Hour, where we're going to take a deep delve into history and ask a bunch of questions about how these disorganized Germans were able to just pull off, you know, all all these cookings of people. This podcast is sponsored by Cayman Cigar Company. Once again, they make premium cigars using the highest quality Caribbean tobacco, and the cigars are hand-rolled by master cigar rollers. So enjoy a cigar and give back to those in need. Head to caymancigars.com slash Giannis Pappas to check out their sampler while supplies last. Use the code Giannis for 10% off your order. Once again, that's Cayman Cigars with an S dot com backslash Giannis for 10% off and make sure you use my promo code Giannis so they know that I sent you. All right. Maybe I shouldn't have said cookings of people, but technically that's what happened. And according to the last honest historian in a, in America, Daryl Cooper, um, who I didn't know until now, I think most of America didn't know until now. Um, but it's very important that his work right now um, makes it to the forefront of the American consciousness Um, because he's dealing with things that are really important now, like World War II, and we need to revisit it. We need to revisit it um, to figure out why Churchill was bad and why Hitler was misunderstood, okay? The history is written by the victors, as you know. Um, and sometimes that's not the accurate story. Okay. Let's put ourselves in Hitler's shoes for a second. 
let's put ourselves in Hitler's shoes. Here's a guy who just wants to make the world better, right? He's a peaceful guy. He's an artist. The guy's an artist. All he wants to do is make art. And all he wants to do is make the world just a peaceful, diverse, happy place where freedom reigns and things are, things are the Garden of Eden. That's all he wanted to do. Then he runs a, across a little problem. The only way I'm going to be able to make the world a beautiful, peaceful place um, is I'm going to have to invade a bunch of places. Um, and then there's going to be a lot of POWs and people that I got to put in camps. Whoops. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all these people. I was not prepared. I was not prepared. I didn't think this out. I'm like, all right, listen. It's going to be, all right, refugees happening. People move, people flee. Uh, we're going to have to create some camps, set up some stuff. I didn't think it through. So to, do, to be humane, to be humane, he um, decided to uh, create a bunch of ovens and give them a quicker death because letting them starve over a long period of time is just cruel. That's just a cruel thing. And as you can see, when we, um, when we um, liberated those camps, and we, I wasn't there, um, but when the Americans and the Allied forces um, liberated those camps, you can see that those guys were well-fed. So that, it, you know, it wasn't that they were starving. It was like they were well-fed, but it was just a quicker solution to kill them all. Um, so the guy was just in a pickle. And, he, you know, people don't understand... <laughs> They don't understand how tough of a pickle that is. And, you know, when you got so many plans, it's obvious that you may forget one. There, One might slip your mind. Like, what do I do with all these Romani people, gypsies, um, Jews? I think the Jews were in there. Um, what do I do with them? What do we do with them? Okay, we got to put them in camps, which is a humane thing to do. Because camp's, camp's fun. Camp's a fun place, you know? First time I kissed a girl was at a camp. It's a fun place. I love that they're still called camps. That there's, <laughs> should we, maybe, you know, that's a, that's a point where maybe we could have invented another word. You know, it's the same word. You go summer camp, extermination camp. Those are two different types of camps. We need another word there. I think that might be the problem here. I think Daryl Cooper... America's last honest historian who was interviewed on the number one podcast in the world with the most honest, hard-hitting journalist, Tucker Carlson. Um, I think that's where the dilemma for Hitler became apparent to him, you know? He's like, camps, like who would set up camps? Good people. People who are thinking about, you know, what do you do at camp? Okay, let's do some finger painting. Let's do some horseback riding. Let's make out behind the cabin seven. Let's let's drink some bug juice. You know, it's fun stuff. So he's going like, what 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 happened? What what why did these people die in these camps? And the reason that he found was that it was it was a quagmire. It was a little bit of a what do I do here? Let me do the humane thing and put them down. Like you put dogs down. You don't want them to suffer. You don't want the people to suffer a slow death. So you put them down. Um, so I've seen the clips. Um, that's exactly what he said. But the great thing about X and the great thing about the internet is um, ordinary people have a voice. And some of those ordinary people aren't real. Some of them are just fake accounts and they just throw things in there because they know the intellectual level of a lot of people who are on Twitter is let's just say not top notch. We're not talking about top notch Ivy League kind of rational minds here. So they just throw things out there. They just like to throw things out there and say he didn't say that. You got to listen to the fifteen hundred hour podcast he did, <laughs> and you, and then you'll figure it out. Oh, you don't get it. Just you know, listen to his podcast for a year and you'll figure it out. It's not shit. Trust me. You got to listen to it for. Who has nine hours to sit around and listen to a guy um, 
talk about this stuff. Now, a lot of people are saying it's, he didn't, they'll just say he didn't say that, even though I watched him say it. It's the same thing with RFK. When RFK said the virus was, there's a, overwhelming evidence that the COVID virus was engineered to kill only blacks and whites and spare Chinese and Jews. I watched it come out of his mouth. I watched it. Whatever you think about RFK, I watched him say it. Now there's going to be some people going, yeah, but it's true. <laughs> Yeah, but it's true. So then we got to get back into this back and forth and find some Chinese people who died. I guess if you go by the metrics of uh, the People's uh, Republic of China, I think they said, what, five people died? I think they only said five people died. I think the official government record that uh, Czar Z released is only five Chinese died. I guess not a lot of Chinese died. Um, that's why they did those uh, complete fucking lockdowns while the rest of the world was open they were still locked down because nobody died and it wasn't causing a problem so no chinese died do you remember they were like locked down forever and, and the austerity of those lockdowns like it made it made our lockdowns look like laissez-faire freedom but i guess only i think the official this is the funny thing i think the official record is 5000 i think the chinese government said 5 <laughs> 5,000 people. I think globally, um, COVID supposedly killed over 20 million people. And, and the, the place where it originated, only 5,000 people. So if you believe that, then RFK is probably right. Only 5,000 people. And the reason they did such uh, austere lockdowns for so long is anyone's guess. I don't know. Can a million people, who know? I think the, dude, I think I read it. The official number is 5,000. This would be so much easier if you had chat GBT. But what did he say? I mean, I think it's 5,000. So only 5,000 people, Chinese died. And Jews, I don't think one Jew died. So I don't know. I don't know. Did any Jewish people in New York die? <laughs> From what I read, um, the Hasidic communities were hit pretty hard. So I don't know, but I did see it come out of RFK's mouth. I did see him say that. So um, it's been said. I saw um, Daryl Cooper. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's a little honest, more honest. So the Chinese government officials reported approximately 83,000 deaths due to COVID. Um, however, it's important... To know that has not been uh, there's been significant skepticism <laughs> about those numbers regarding that. Yeah, they haven't really been that um, open about it. They don't really have an open society. Um, Daryl Cooper is a historian that Tucker Carlson had on, and it's all the rage on X. Elon Musk retweeted it. Um, it it's a big platform, and um, people are up in arms. Is this guy a Nazi apologist or not? You know? And um, I like to say there's probably a lot of gray zone there when it comes to it, liking the Nazis, right? There's a lot of gray zone. There's a lot of gray zone. Like, for example, how do you interpret this tweet, right? How do you interpret the tweet about, let's look at some of his tweets. Let's play the game. Is there any gray zone here? Is Daryl Cooper uh, a lover of the Nazis? We don't know. We got to look at some of his tweets. Um, because before he got platformed in a big way, he had some tweets. So the best thing about historians is that you're usually apolitical and um, they don't get into picking a side. Um, this guy's tweeting buys as, as much ammunition as you can. Um, He's really a level-headed guy. Um, and here's one of his tweets, and you'll see it right here. Um, this is a real tweet. And on the left, you have Hitler in the high command in front of the Eiffel Tower. And then on the right side, you have um, some French drag queens. Um, and I know those are scary. I know, I know we're... We're all scared about the disappearance of the straight man. Um, but trust me, there I see a lot of them, dude. 
They're still they're still being born. I don't think you have to worry. I think I think straights are still the majority. <laughs> I think they're still the majority. Um, and you know the French do so. You know when I watched this opening ceremony, I did not think about the Last Supper when I saw it. I think a lot of people didn't, but a lot of people did because a lot of people are looking, you know, for things to be offended by. Um, the right is doing that a lot now, just like the left used to do. Um, so here he's side by side at Hitler and his henchmen after they have invaded and taken over um, France uh, and a picture of them by the Eiffel Tower, the capital of France, Paris, right? The biggest city. And he tweets, this may be putting it too crudely for some. Yeah, uh, like, you know, fucking cucks. And, uh, you know, <laughs> people who are a little too sensitive can't handle free speech on X. But the picture on the left was infinitely preferable in virtually every way than the one on the right. I agree. I agree. When I look at the dangers in the right and the left one, I really, I go, who's going to keep my kids safe? <laughs> you know, it's a good way to keep yourself safe from drag queens. First of all, um, I, I don't know what kind of killing spree drag queens go on, but um, a good way to keep yourself safe from drag queens is just not to go to the Castro. Or, or um, not take your daughter to uh, a drag show. I think that's about it. Um, how to keep your daughter safe from Hitler. Um, you got to make sure that passport has a picture of blonde hair, blonde hair and blue eyes. That's about it. Um, so I don't know. How do you interpret that tweet? I mean, let's come on. We're trying to. We're trying to prove that that's that he's that's the whole point of this segment right now is how is he not a Nazi apologist by this tweet? Come on, you're his lawyer. You're his lawyer. What's he saying here? That we're misinterpreting because there's going to be a lot of people in the comments saying like, you got to listen to the whole <laughs> thing, man. You're taking him out of context. So how are we taking this out of context? How can you interpret this tweet? What's he trying to say here? Hmm. Maybe it has nothing to do with the Nazis. Maybe right. it's just men. Maybe he's talking about fashion. Maybe he he's talking about fashion. He okay. Likes, he likes their overcoats. Look, their overcoats are really nice. <laughs> Hugo Boss did a, a really bang up job. Um, you know, to be honest with you, the one on the left looks a lot gayer than the one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all dudes. <laughs> it does look like a San Francisco basement. Yeah, and here's the deal. One of Hitler's high command, I can't remember his name because who cares, was a fully out of the closet gay guy oh, yeah. that Hitler like looked the other way because he was such a good evil doer. <laughs> we could find his name in a second, but that guy's wild. He was a full flaming. I mean, eventually Hitler had him killed because he hated homos, um, you know, which usually means secretly, secretly, you know, when you hate, when you hate, when you hate something secretly, it kind of means you wish you were the thing. So the fashion, yeah, it's a fashion call. I think I, I think that's that's the only way we can interpret that one. Yeah, I like that he does it in riddles too. Mm -hmm. Like the last episode, I told you, doesn't outright say it. Just you know, knows how to get you riled up. He knows how to get the people who are going to call him a Nazi riled up, and he knows how to get the people who are Nazis supporting. But don't come out and say it at their jobs or whatever. Or you know, you know, it's just sort of it's in the texts. You know the people in the texts, this the people in the texts with their friends, they're gonna write something like, read the whole thing. Read the whole thing. Go listen to his podcast. He does 15 hour videos on rethinking Jim Jones. <laughs> Jim Jones was a believer. Now my instinct is telling me that this guy is majorly Christian in a Christian Ayatollah way. I don't know anything about him. We don't do a lot of pre-research before here, but I'm gonna guess he's a big Christ guy. I'm just going to guess that. Now, here's another tweet. And you tell me, as his lawyer, Jesse, how it's um, how he's not a Nazi apologist. 
the the tweet was um, Trump's shooter, the shooter of Trump, is now in hell looking for Hitler. Um, the two guys that Kyle Rittenhouse killed um, are how are they going to tell him? Right? Was it something like that? How are they going to break him the news? Oh, how are they going to break him the news? That's exactly what it is. So, it, oh, he goes, if you're thinking, if you think you're having a bad day, imagine the guy who shot Trump walking around hell looking for Hitler and the two guys that Kyle Rittenhouse dropped have to figure out how to tell him the news. This one's a real brain teaser. This one's a real brain teaser. <laughs> We tried to interpret it. We tried to figure it out. We sat here. We tried to figure out it as many ways as we could. The only thing we came up with <laughs> that makes sense is that Hitler is not there because he's in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> is there any other possible interpretation of that tweet that you can think of? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. we, it's like a riddle, right? Yeah, it's a real riddle. Because part of me thinks that's what he's he's doing a strong win. He's 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 doing the internet. I'm saying it without saying it. I'm saying it without saying it. If you attack me, that's not what I meant. But if you support it, yeah, I I want both. I want both. I want I want the attention. I want the attention. I want to be important. You know. I want to. I want in on this internet game. This historian, <laughs> let me tell you something. This historian wants in on this internet game. He's probably seeing like a bunch of college dropouts, like just dropping content and owning people with their sophistry and their rhetoric and claiming to be smarter than they are, quoting books that they read. Anyone can read a fucking book. Do you have any experience? What are you doing? Who are you? What did you start as? Who are you? Who are these fucking people? Who is this guy? <laughs> right. So that was the, the you found the they found the exact tweet. If you're having a bad day, just remember that the Trump shooter is currently wandering around hell looking for Hitler while the two guys Kyle Rittenhouse dropped figure out how to break the news to him. <laughs> okay. Right. It's like an SAT question. You got to start backwards. Well, here's a better question. What's another way to interpret that? What's another feasible way to interpret that? Break the news to him. Um, break the news to him. So the guy is looking for Hitler because he likes Hitler, right? He wants to talk to Hitler. So he's calling the guy that shot Trump Hitler. So he's saying he was bad. I don't know. Is he bad? Is he meaning that's bad? Did he want... To, is he calling the guy who... Shot Trump bad because he's in hell. Mm -hmm. So he's bad. Right. So he's walking around looking for Hitler because he's another bad guy and that's his icon and he wants to talk to him. And the other two guys are in hell because they're bad guys. Because they're bad guys. The guys that got murdered by Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse are bad guys. Right. So this guy's clearly, one of his tweets was buy as much ammunition as you can. He's gearing up. This guy's gearing up. He wants you to gear up. Um, he's got that two dan. He's got the jig going, right? He's on the... <laughs> They're commies. I think that he's the left foot. No, he's the right foot in the jig. He's the right foot in the jig. They're all commies. Get ready. They're coming for everything. So get all your ammunition to fight him off. He's 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 rallying people up. So those guys are bad. So they're in hell. So they're looking for Hitler. So all the bad guys are looking for Hitler. But Kyle Rittenhouse's uh, dead bodies, the bodies of Kyle Rittenhouse that he sent to hell already know that Hitler is not there. Because they were looking for him. They were looking for him too. So is he calling Hitler bad here? Or is he saying he's in heaven? Oh, oh, I get it. Okay, I just figured it out. Okay, okay, I get it. Here it is. Um, first, I'll give you the real interpretation and then we'll be the lawyer again. So those guys are in hell because they were all bad. They thought Hitler was bad. And they love the bad version of Hitler that was taught to them in history. So they're looking for their idol. But he, the most honest historian in America, has poked holes in that theory about how bad Hitler was. And Hitler is, was actually trying to do good. And so he's in heaven. So Kyle, 
that's what it is. So Kyle Rittenhouse's dudes are going like, he's not here, dude. He's in heaven because we were lied to, you know? Did so, uh, somebody should have wrote the book, The People's History of Hitler. <laughs> and he's going to write that. That's what it is. Okay, that's the real interpretation. That, that's, that's what he meant. Okay, so that's what he means. Hitler is in heaven because he was good, and they thought he was bad because they were taught bad things. So, but what, what would be, if someone asked him if that's what he's saying, what, what would be the word salad you would come up with? How would you chop it up to defend that tweet? He's looking for Trump Hitler, not the actual Hitler, and getting the news broken that he's not only failed, but produced the hardest piece of right-wing propaganda of all time. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, uh, so what does that mean? I have no idea. I don't know either. Oh, he thought Trump, so maybe he thought that he killed so Trump is Hitler. Right. Oh, and so he's he, looking for Hitler right. because he thought he killed Hitler. Right. So he's looking but for Trump in hell. He's looking for Trump in hell. But then what are Kyle Rittenhouse's dudes? Yeah, what are those dudes What are those there? dudes doing in there? Oh, because they're going, he's bad too. We're looking for Hitler too because they were against Kyle Rittenhouse, so they hated Trump. So he's telling them he's not dead. Because oh, those dudes wanted to kill Trump. Oh, so he's saying those people think Trump is Hitler. So uh, he could have just said Trump if he meant Trump, right? <laughs> yeah, it's an SAT question. It's really making you think here. <laughs> well, that's what is so great about being an internet guy <laughs> is you can throw this out there and know that the engagement is going to be crazy because people are going to try to figure out if you mean Hitler's in heaven or if Trump's not there. So that's what it is. Okay, we figured it out. We figured it out. So it takes some thinking. Well, it is one interpretation because here's another one. Nah, but Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hitler went to heaven is a whole philosophical line of thought. I see you aren't up to it. Just move along. Only winners get to heaven. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, yes, this guy's a blazing anti-Semite. I don't really like Jews that much, but I like... Low IQ ideologies even less. I love that he said, I don't like Jews that much. So he's saying, hey, man, trust what I'm saying, because I also believe that they're fucking low scum, but I don't like stupid people even less. So this guy's got his priorities right. He goes like this, stupid people, Jews. And, and then a few people he hates above that, probably an ex-girlfriend, maybe a principal he had, a teacher who told him off, someone who flipped him off on the highway. But he's got stupid people at the bottom and Jews right above. I like this guy. It's really fun in the comments. It's really fun when you go to these uh, when you go to these comments. So contra this guy's controversial, and um, someone's finally platforming because he's too strong for the he's too con he's too honest for the mainstream media to let people know that after rigorous historical analysis of, I think, a letter <laughs> that the Nazis really put the POWs um, into ovens to kill them humanely. Also, he alludes strongly to the fact that he blames Churchill for the widening of the war. It should have just been an invasion of Poland, guys. That's it. That's it. I think he also alludes to um, some Jewish financiers bailing, um, bailing Winston Churchill out earlier in life, and I think that turns out to be true. And and I think people say, so you're saying that they he was doing everything that they wanted and for Israel, and then that guy, uh, Daryl Cooper, says, no, I'm just saying it is a thing. It's a thing. There was a Jew that helped him at some point. So... You do the math. I think he's just, I, this guy, this is one of those guys that just wants you to do the math. He, he tweets the tweet and he goes, you figure out what I'm trying to mean. You figure it out. But he did say in the Tucker interview that, you know, that uh, Churchill was a drunk and a psychopath. Or I think that's sort of, I don't know if he verbatim said that, but I think that's kind of, he's going, hey, look, you know, and what he's using is Stalin was bad. 
It's not as black and white. This guy's trying, he's a man after my own heart. He's trying to go after nuance. And one of those nuances being, understand the Nazis' problem with these POWs. What are you supposed to do when you round up people in a war? Let them starve to death? What kind of fucking demon would do that? Only a good person would throw them into ovens. Dude, I know people have been buying Cayman cigars. How do you, how have you been enjoying them? Are they good? I smoked every single one in my sampler pack. Hey, Cayman cigars, hook a brother up with another one. I got a fucking new fire pit. I can't curse. Can I curse during this? Why not? Um, I need some ciggies. These are great cigars. Cayman Cigar Company. They make premium cigars using the highest quality Caribbean tobacco. Um, and here they're good. They give 100% of the net profits to charity. Um, they're the only premium cigar company to donate 100% of the net profits to charity. Every dollar they don't use to roll cigars goes back to local and international charitable organizations from creating entrepreneurial opportunities for marginalized populations to supporting the self-sufficiency of those in addiction recovery to providing specialized assistance to U.S. veterans. So just for my listeners, they created a custom sampler pack so you can go enjoy all of their top cigars in one pack. They're all good. They sent me that same pack, and I smoked every one like I told you, and they're just good cigars. And I'm not just saying that. Thank God they're good so I can mean it. So head to caymancigars.com slash Giannis. Check out that sampler right now um, and uh, enjoy a cigar and give back to those in need. Once again, that's caymancigarswithans.com slash Giannis for 10% off. Make sure you use my promo code Giannis so they know I sent you. Basically, if you love cigars, get them delivered to you. They're delicious. It's a great cause. They're good cigars. Okay, here we got a direct quote. Nazis launched a war and they were completely unprepared to deal with the prisoners of war. Millions of people ended up dead. Imagine, imagine a Nazi, imagine Nazis going to war without a plan. Imagine there being no plan. Imagine the people who are most, is there anyone, is there a war machine in history that was more planned than the Nazi war machine? Are Germans people who are usually thought of as being uh, planless, not punctual, sort of riffers? <laughs> Sounds more like the Greeks, right? It, you know. If Hitler was a comic, he'd really be a setup joke guy. If the Nazis were comics, it would really be a planned set. I mean, they're Nazis, dog. They don't, they don't go into things without a plan. Um, and I, I think I remember one actual plan called the 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 final solution. I think that was an actual plan. Um, I think there's Nazis uh, in the Hague who talked about. It admitted, yeah, this is what Hitler wanted to do with the Jews, and this is what we decided to do with the Jews. This was our plan. <laughs> I mean, why are we revisit? What is going on? This is sort of like when the left started tearing down statues. Now this guy wants to tear down the. It's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And what they do is they find an imperfection, like they find something. Right? It's the same thing with Israel and Palestine. Because the Israelis do a lot of fucked up shit, dude. They do, you know? So it's like the, you just, you, you use that and then you just go and you extrapolate from there and you go, all Jews are evil. Um, you go, it's, you could do the same thing with Hamas and the Palestinians, you know? You find something good that Hamas does or bad that Hamas does and then you go, they're all bad. It's a hodgepodge out there, brother. And there's a lot of local personalities that differ, that do things different, that that don't make the news, you know? A couple of soldiers, you know, do something horrible. It, it, it's usually like a one psychopath in there, and then that makes the news, and then they're like, look at what they're all doing when they're not all doing that. I'll just say this quickly. What happened is the mainstream media has failed, and they failed um, when the internet was created. They needed to compete um, on this new platform where news was much faster. They started giving away news free. So then they started having to sensationalize stuff and they started lying a lot 
And then TV started doing the same thing because they had to compete. So they started doing a lot of towing the line, party rah rahing, you know, to get to get people to stay. Then they tried uh, diversity and stuff like that, going like, "Hey, it's all evil on the internet. If you're a good person, you only have to be here." It became left wing media, and then the internet became right wing media. So what happened was the mainstream media got caught lying over and over again, and people lost trust in them, and. Um, then that just opened the gates of hell. Now that now there's just all these people claiming to figure it out and nobody knows who the fuck to believe. And you got these people just listening to this stuff. And whenever someone says you got to listen to nine hours to get it, <laughs> that's always a red flag for me. You know, it's like, why can't I just tell me what it is? Tell me what it is. It's like, yeah, that's what he said, but you got to listen to the rat. You got to listen to 19 hours, maybe an hour. If you say, listen to the full hour, I'll go, okay. But if someone says, listen to the nine hours, listen to the whole, you're going like, all right. It sounds like you're overcompensating and you just want me to get distracted by a bunch of other stuff that he says. I don't know. Maybe this guy's figured it out. Maybe Winston Churchill is the real villain of World War II and he kept the war going because he bombed the Black Forest. <laughs> as far as I know, um, all the bombings that England did were in retaliation to bombings that the Nazis did. As far as I know, the Nazis had a plan to take over the fucking world. That's as, that's as far, maybe I was lied to. You know, were we lied to? What did he just, he just wanted Poland, not Austria, his home, his home country. He didn't want to unite Austria, not Austria. If you don't want the USSR, if you don't want to control the, U uh, the USSR, you really got a strange way of showing it by invading. If you don't want Greece, you got a really strange way of showing it by invading Greece. If you don't want France or England, you got a really strange way of showing it by invading. That's like someone, you know, trying to kiss you and then saying, I'm not into you, man. I don't know why I made that example a gay one. <laughs> why do I feel like, why do I feel like people are going to watch us and call me crazy? Am I crazy or am I sane in a crazy world? I'm trying to understand are people cozying up to people for the views? Is that really, is people knowing their audience? Are they really just rallying people up for the numbers because there's money behind here and big numbers means ever? Does Tucker care? I mean, it's a real, like, he calls him the most honest historian in America. So, I don't know. what What is going on? Does Elon have any vested interest in engagement and high viewership and controversy on his site. I'm just trying to understand what everyone's doing. What's the real motivations here? Do people care? Does everyone really care about this country? What do they care about? What's going on? What does this guy care about? He just wants the truth out there? He wants the truth out there? Oh, he's got another great tweet. All right, first I just want to say it's very, I think this guy... Let's, we're going to find out if my instincts were right here. And he's, a, he's an Ayatollah type Christ. And also, I think it's pretty easy to see that this guy injects his own beliefs pretty heavily into his analysis of history. And correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like the way he would save face and kind of create a word salad here when he's challenged on some of the things he said um, is he'd probably, he'd probably say something along the lines of communism is the real enemy, fascism is the way to beat it. Um, so Hitler was really kind of a hero because he was trying to get rid of communism. Communism was the real deal. He's probably putting Stalin as number one because Stalin did kill more people. And he's going, look, look, Stalin was a bad guy. We tagged up with Stalin, you know, just to save some Jews when there was a bigger problem here. That's what he would say, right? Just save some Jews because look, the Jews, um, they're not, God's favorite. And we're going to do again. We're going to play Daryl Cooper's lawyer, which is the name of this episode. Here's another tweet. Now you may go, Yanni, 
people tweet shit and, you know, why you hold them in the fire? I've tweeted a lot of dumb shit. There used to be a time where people understood that comedians are dumb and say dumb shit. And you just were like, he's a comedian. What the fuck, right? Even if a comedian's trying to say something smart, you can even go, he's a fucking comedian. What the fuck? But when a guy is like calling himself a journalist, like Tucker or Alex Jones, saying like, I'm a fucking telling you the truth, um, or a guy who's a historian saying, I'm telling you the truth, that's when you can hold these guys for, un, uh, you know, their feet under the fire and be rigorous with your scrutiny, right? Same thing if someone's running for president. I believe, all right, you ran for president, so... We're going to put your feet, we're going to really put you under rigorous scrutiny and ask some questions about the chopped off whale head. We're going to ask some questions about uh, why were you claiming Obama was not born in the country? You know, what are you doing here? Right. You know, troll uh, Trump's and troll Trump entered politics with like a fifth grader troll of Obama. Just going like, hey, man, he's not he doesn't have a birth certificate. It's just that's just forgotten. Just like, that's how he got into this thing. Just being a troll. I'm telling you, dude, he's the first. That That is officially when the internet broke into DC is that Trump birther like movement. Of like he's not, he wasn't born here, dude. And he wasn't born here, dude. I know his mom's from Kansas, but that dude, but, and you know, he still capitalizes Hussein in the middle. Like he just, they know, these trolls know what they're doing. It's a, it it the troll was created by the internet it's just a it's a type of person it's a type of thing where they're just looking for attention and they any loophole they can find and you know they just get they don't care it's not it's not about truth it has nothing to do with truth it's about fucking making a stink you want to make a splash you make a splash by being fucking controversial. Nobody's got time to dig into the truth. You just make a fucking splash. You go out on Tucker and you say, listen, they did the humane thing, okay? You just make a splash. You throw up a tweet like this and you make a splash. Here it is. The coming of the Messiah fulfilled the Jews' special purpose in the world. First, oh, so he's saying Christ... Am I, am I going to be right? They were invited into the new covenant, but were jealous of their chosenness and too resentful over their historic defeats to accept equality under God with Gentiles. So they were cast out, and the Israelite religion disappeared from the world forever in 70 A.D., when it's leprous, second temple, what does that mean, leprous? Was it leprosy? Is that a conjugation of leprosy? All right, whatever. When it's leprous, second temple was destroyed in 70 AD. So that's when it disappeared. I'm not sure if it disappeared just because the temple was gone, but all right. Um, I think they kind of persist to this day, the Jews, no? Am I misinterpreting this wrong? Was there an Israelite thing? And by the way, the Israelites are uh, alive and well on corners in Fulton Mall. <laughs> the black Israelites have picked up the torch. Um, the covenant passed to those who accepted the invitation. Christianity is not rooted in Judaism. It overcame it. Those who rejected Christ rejected the covenant and God himself. The gospel couldn't possibly be clearer about this. I think he's, I think this guy is all about separation of history and church. <laughs> okay. So I am here to represent Mr. Daryl Cooper. Um, this is what you call objective historical analysis. This is just the facts, dude. This is the facts. The historical facts being that the Jews rejected God, and that's why we got problems. That's subjective, okay? 
It's objective to say that they were jealous of their chosenness and they were resentful over their historic defeats. Um, and that's why they didn't want to accept equality under God with Gentiles. They just, that's it. That's it. That's what it is. It's written in original sources. That's the deal. That's why the Jews and Christians are still not all Christians. That's why they're still Jews. Their religion was ousted when the temple was destroyed um, by 70 AD. I think that's, is he talking about the Temple of Solomon? Is that when uh, the Romans did that? Who gives a shit? Who cares? Who gives a fuck? I'm not a historian. I assume that's what it is. Who gives a fuck? But they were cast out and their religion disappeared from the world forever in 70 AD. Um, What was their religion before? Was it a different? Were the Israelites different? Were they black and shouting about white people have leprosy? (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, they were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for the Messiah. So he came in Jesus. Oh, so he's basically saying they served their, their religion disappeared because G- the Messiah came. His, another historical fact. Historical fact. He rose from the dead. Historical fact. He turned water into wine. Historical fact. He walked on water. Historical fact. Fact. He's the Messiah. Historical fact. He will be back. Historical fact. We're dealing with facts. This is not faith. This is facts he's talking about because he's the most honest historian around. And so basically he's saying Judaism stopped. Judaism's over because their whole religion was about a Messiah coming to save them um, from all the oppression. Right, because that originally was like the Egyptians. They were always going after the Jews. And I ha- I suspect people were probably always going after the Jews because they were like a tight little clan thing. Um, and they were like the first ones to be like um, monotheistic. So I think that was the thing. They were like the first monotheistic religion, right? They were. Everyone else had gods. The Greeks had gods. The Egyptians had gods. The Romans had gods. And the Jews were just like, no, there's one. And then they were probably like, you know, being Jews, winning. They were probably just fucking, you went to their little part of, you know, they went to their little shit. People hate to admit, they just fucking probably had a great little, you know, in Iraq, you know, like the Muslims kicked them out of Iraq and shit like that uh, when they did their conquests. They, They had these little tribes going on and they were probably just fucking killing it. Fish, discounts. They were, <laughs> they were fucking fishing. They figuring it out, dude. Just like they do at B&H. It's just like they all got Frisbees on and curls, but like everyone goes to B&H and everyone deals with them being shut down on the Shabbat, on the Shabbats or whatever it is. Everyone deals with it because it's just got everything in there. So they were probably just fucking killing it. And that makes people pissed because what are the Jews doing that no other group can do? If they are controlling the world, what? why don't you do it? Why don't you just do what they're doing? What do they do? They, they're constantly overrepresented in higher education positions of power. I mean, what do you want? Like I said, it's never like you go, oh, this guy's in the government or this guy's in Hollywood or this guy's a doctor, which by the way, no controversy about a lot of Jewish doctors. No controversy about that. Overrepresentation there. Never hear about that. Not anymore. They're all Indian now. Yeah, they're all Indian, but still oh, highly overrepresented Jews. And it used to be like oh, really yeah. highly, highly yeah. overrepresented. Uh, uh, lawyers, no, no controversy, you know, maybe a little lawyers because they got come back, come back, come back, you know, but doctors, no controversy. No, nobody cares about the overrepresentation of Jews as doctors, right? There's no conspiracy there. The conspiracy is only Hollywood, banks, but they're overrepresented in every field. Because it seems like they are like educate, like they they they're doing something right, and people just they'd rather go. It's got to be nefarious, like it has to be like what's going on. And the people who yell that the most usually don't have such high degrees, don't know how to do surgery, you know, don't have a movie studio, could never build one. It just these are coincidences. I just fucking see. It's usually guys with fucking clan hoods on who are like sheriffs of towns or some other fucking religion that hates them because of whatever's going on in the fucking Middle East or other country people who are fucking starving while the Jews are figuring some shit out. And then they go, fuck, what the fuck are they doing? And they get pissed. It's like when comics see another comic succeeding, they're going, this is fucking bullshit. 
He blew his way to the top. You know? It's like, and that's what happened. People below, like, who are not doing as good, just fucking scream at the people. They always go, like, this fucking, the only thing is this guy's good looking. It's the only fucking reason. Because it's, people are stupid. I even do it. The only reason people aren't fucking watching this podcast in the millions and millions is because people are fucking stupid. It has nothing to do with the point, the fact that I won't play ball. <laughs> Am I wrong to notice that? I just notice it. I, I just fucking kind of notice it. Who was Hitler? He was like a fucking, who was the guy? He was a World War II, World War I veteran. Then he was like a vagrant. He lived around Paris. Like he was living in some fucking poor house. He was, he was painting shit. Who the fuck's this guy? <laughs> and he writes a whole fuck. What the fuck? This is what happens when you just fucking open the gates of hell and let everybody in. There has to be some levels, you know, because humans, the difference in our intelligence level and our morality level and our courage level is the most unique of any animal. Tigers are basically tigers. Dogs are dogs. There's a little variation. One's a little more alpha than the other one, but they're all fucking will eat you. They're all like the level and difference in intelligence between dogs is not that much. Do any animal, it's they're very similar. The, hu the Homo sapien is the only animal where you got like, hey, I created AI. Hey, I created a plane. And then like, <laughs> and then like, you know, a fucking comment on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, it the, the range and intelligence of humans. And now the internet, you got just like all these different levels of intelligence speaking to each other. It's crazy. And then also the variation in morality. Other animals don't have to deal with that. Hey, this guy's a real fucking snake. Yeah, this guy's fucking not who he says he is. They don't, animals don't know how to lie, really. A few animals do, I know. They do it to hunt, hyenas. It's, it's deception. It's not really a fucking lie. It's the difference between deception and a lie, okay? Um, animals don't fucking lie. Okay, maybe the chimps have lied or something. I don't fucking, you get my fucking point. You know how many species there are on the planet? Almost none of them lie, but they'll pick one thing. They'll nitpick on me and go, yeah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And they'll throw the baby out with the bathwater because that's what the internet is about. Throwing the baby out with the bathwater because guess what? Because Winston Churchill liked to drink a little bit. <laughs> guess what? He bombed the black forest. So fuck him. He also hated Indians. Fuck the guy. This is exactly the type of canceling the left was doing fucking last year. Now this fucking, fucking Christian nut, let's just call it what it is. <laughs> this fucking zealot is trying to do the same thing with his zealot mouthpiece, uh, Tucker Carlson. I'm fucking sick of this shit, man. I'm sick of this fucking bullshit. Can everyone be what they are? No more. Shut the internet down. Comedians are only live, and that's fucking it. They can no longer have contact with presidential candidates and fucking grifter journalists. And can journalists just be fucking journalists and op-ed guys be op-ed guys and fucking scientists be fucking scientists? Everyone needs to go back to their own fucking base. This is getting out of fucking hand, dude. Am I wrong? It's getting out of hand. Get out of here, dude. You're a finger painter. <laughs> you, yeah, I'm going to be out of a job. <laughs> yeah, you know, fuck this shit. Everyone needs to go back to what they're doing. It all started, like Jim Gaffigan said, when whores became celebrities. <laughs> he won't even mind that I quoted that because he'll just say, I never said that. I was like, I saw you say it live, and it was a great joke. It's a good joke. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think there's too many celebrities now, like, I still got to go, hey, too many celebrities. You have to go back to just being a whore. <laughs> Was that the start of it? Like, hey, you're a celebrity. It's like, no, isn't that just a whore? Isn't she just like a loose lady? <sighs> what was my original point? <laughs> you made a lot of them. 
I wanted to wrap it up with a bow, and I don't remember where I started. You had a good out. You did have a good out. What was it? It was well, you ended on Churchill, uh, but oh, when I said because Churchill bombed the Black Forest, uh, he was a drunk. Yeah, yeah. But the other, the next part was good too. So, oh, I was talking about. Yeah, I wanted to wrap that up. Yeah, I wanted to wrap that up. Yeah, I was talking about the Jews and noticing that now. This is the internet. So people are going to watch this and go, Yanni supports genocide. That's just what it's going to be. They're going to say a comedian who's sitting doing a podcast supports genocide because I won't criticize Israel. I will criticize Israel. I think Israel has not been a great ally to the United States in a lot of ways. And we don't even, as far as intelligence goes, they've been caught like stealing secrets, doing a bunch of shady shit from us. Israel looks after fucking Israel. I get it. I don't always support our support of Israel. They do what they want. Even when we fucking ask them not to, they fucking do what they want. And yeah, sometimes I question like, what the fuck, dude? You know? Under the Obama administration, we became the biggest oil producer um, in the world. That continued under Trump. Um, and again, people are like, oh, people want to claim Obama. It was Ob because of Obama. Well, he didn't regulate it to stop it, so he deserves credit that way. But presidents don't really control oil markets, right? Um, us becoming the biggest producer probably had a lot more to do with business and fracking and all that stuff and horizontal drilling, whatever that, whatever, however they do that. And we became, uh, you know, we became the biggest oil producer. So we can kind of say fuck you to the Middle East. So if I was Israel, I would fucking start listening a little bit. Because there is a big movement here of people going like, fucking do what we say, dude. Like, what are you doing? And on Columbia's campus, you know, they're really upset. So you can't, you can't, you got to do something. You got to stop something because look, people need to get to work. And this is just, these protests are going crazy. But look, Israel's doing a lot of murdering over there of innocent people, and that is not good. Hamas did some murdering of innocent people. Um, if they had more weapons, they'd do more. So like, I hate people who don't acknowledge that side too. And then I don't want to get into the whole who's fucking the colonizer. That is such... We've talked about it ad nauseum, and it's just like, dude, you can't start the conversation where you want to start the conversation. This is such a complicated issue because the Jews were there originally, and their religion wants them back there, and then the British put them there. I mean, and then you go, oh, but these fucking Palestinians were there. Yeah, they were there. Um, so were the Jews. The Jews got kicked out. The Romans kicked them. I mean, what the fuck? We're going to just, it just goes on and on and on. It's not like the Jews want to be there because they were never there. It's their religious holy land. It's always been. That's why they want to fucking be there. The problem is it's a few other religious holy lands. But can't, don't the fuck, can you? Okay, I think I just solved it. Every religion gets one fucking holy land. That's it. Because here's the deal. Don't the Muslims have Mecca and Medina? That's two. So what is the big deal with Jerusalem with them? Is it big for them? I think that's where the Dome of the Rock is. Maybe. Okay, the Dome of the Rock. Dude, that's a little greedy to have three, God having three cities. So maybe we just got to have a united countries going, all right, everyone gets one city. The Christians, you know, they can get what? We'll give the Christians what? Salt Lake City. <laughs> the Jews get, I don't, I, dude, if I say the Jews get Jerusalem, I'll be fucking, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Leave me alone. I don't fucking know. I don't know. But all I'm saying is maybe every religion should just have one. Just one city. I mean, the Muslims have three? Muslims have three? Is it Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem? Uh, Jerusalem, yeah. The Dome yeah. of the Rock is in Jerusalem. And then the fourth one is London. <laughs> <laughs> just an instinctual duck. <laughs> Felt like George W. Bush at that press conference in Iraq. Just, <laughs> By the way, that kid could throw a fastball and can dock from a shoe. Yeah, he's good. He athlete. did a de de decent job. Um, I don't know, but yeah, it's like it's all bad, dude. It's all bad. I'm against all bad things. I'm against bad things Hamas does. I'm against bad things Israel's done. If you want me to say stop the genocide, I'll say stop the genocide. If you want me to stay release the hostages, I'll say release the hostages. I am a mainstream politician like AOC. I can't wait to fucking meet ya.
We're brought to you as always by uh, the most neutral in the Israel-Palestine conflict sponsors we could find. The most neutral, most honest sponsors. Uh, ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. They also support women and a women's right to vote, but also are very big into the military. They do everything. <laughs> they hunt and love Beyonce. Jared Z does it all. He's a politics-free business, baby. He's for everybody. ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. If you're moving your car out of state or you bought your car out of state, go to ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. Get a free quote. There's student and military discounts as well. For the free dot art, Hawaii is in America. It's where Obama was born, unless you don't believe in that boo ha ha. So if you like music there, which I know Obama claims to like, but I don't think he was from there. I think he was born in the middle of Sudan. For the free dot art, great website. Um, check out local bands in Hawaii, shows, everything. So if you go to Hawaii, check out for the free dot art or just check out if you love music. Um, Nate Linder. Think marketing, think, think Nate Linder. I work with Nate Linder. I think uh, PCB Tech Art works with Nate Linder. So go to natelinder.com. Um, if you need an online marketer, he'll help you rank number one on Google, profit from digital advertising, et cetera. He's focused on results. So go to natelinder.com. And remember, think marketing, think Nate Linder. Displaypros.net. These guys are the real deal when it comes to custom trade booth. Uh, retail fixtures and promotional items. So go hit them up, displaypros.net. Uh, tell them I sent you, you get 10% off um, your first purchase. So they'll work with you to make sure you're completely satisfied. Your idea comes to fruition. They'll build your trade booth. They'll give you promotional items and retail fixtures. This is th These all guys will help you build your business, man. All these sponsors will help you build your business, including rebelsraiders.com who uh, messaged me and told me a very important thing um, about a tweet of mine. I don't think um, Romans actually did throw up their food to eat more, according to him. The great, most honest historian in America, <laughs> Mr. Goat. He told me, because I tweeted something, when in Rome do as the Romans do, you know, shit in a concrete hole next to your buddy, uh, throw up your food when you're full and have more, and fuck a eunuch or something like that. And he said, he was on board with everything, but he said, I don't think the Romans actually did that. It oh. might be more a myth. We're going to look that up. We're going to find <laughs> out. So thank you for the tip. Most importantly, it's rebels-raiders.com. This guy's great. He's a true fan. I'm glad I've been able to help him. He's helping us. We're helping him. Um, um, he, I think he said his backpack, I don't know. He's got backpacks up there. Are they still listed? Um, but he's got military surplus on the site. It's a very cool site. Go to rebels-raiders.com. Check out his military surplus. Get outfitted for the apocalypse. Military packs, load-bearing equipment, magazine holsters, stuff like that. Get ready. If you're a protester, <laughs> this is your site. If you're a citizen, also, he gives you a goat shirt. He's got goat shirt shirts up there. I mean, he's got a fun little business. And he's going to set a Lamborghini on fire. This kid's having fun with his life. And um, he's definitely, you don't want to break into his house. <laughs> he's ready Suds Auto Spa a clean car freak's wet dream pun intended automotive longevity services ceramic coatings paint protection film storage solutions if you're into keeping your car beautiful um, go use their storage assets they're designed to keep your car dust free safe from impacts mildew rodents all that stuff they're in the Pittsburgh area in Bridgeville but they'll travel the larger the job, the farther they will travel. So hit them up at 412-564-5033, or you can email them at info at sudsautospa.com. Follow them on the grand cool car porn, by the way, suds underscore auto underscore spa on the gram. And of course, our boys PCB Tech Art was up for the beautiful Giannis Pappas hour template right there. Buy their Chevy Silverado GMC uh, Sierra Slim phone charge adopters on their website or Amazon to keep you powered up on the go, ensuring you're always connected. Um, if you need, if you're a golf enthusiast or business, uh, elevate your game with their customizable ball markers, adding a personal touch to every round. If you're ready to innovate, PCB Tech Art offers 3D printing services for prototypes, bringing your ideas to life with precision and speed. Visit PCBTechArt.com. Use the code Giannis10 for 10% off your order. We appreciate all you guys. We have a spot open. 
We got a spot open. So go get it and we'll see you next week.